Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, help us to understand the truth according to your scripture, according to the word, and according to the way you would have us to know it. In your son's name we pray, amen. And so be it. Hey, y'all. Coaching the fight here. Looking at a recent poll I did. Matter of fact, I did it uh, about two hours ago um, on our channel. So we are still collecting data from this poll. But I wanted to do some... Do, um, wanted to look at it right quick and um, make a, another point along the same lines and that's dealing with the rapture as you can see here on our poll you were given uh, five options um, and if, if you are subscribed you probably got this in your um, in your subscription list or your poll list or however it comes uh, five options that you would like to see us teach about over here on Hermes Academy um, you know we are um, we have one of the largest libraries of scriptural documents in the world and we don't mind digging into those scriptures and pulling out you know facts about you know what the scripture says you know we've done class is before we've told you where the ark is at we've told you where Cain got his wife from we've told you where they um, what else they we've we've told them a lot we gave who uh, Mikilzadek is we've told them about the Zadok priest just a lot of information we've been able to pull out of the scripture um, um, you know when the rapture is and such kind of things but um, on our poll we was asking okay well what is it that you guys really want to know about and we gave you five options uh, the new covenant um, the rapture the third testament of the Bible the hundred and forty four thousand and the tribulation now we're going to touch on these subjects more coming up um, probably in the order in which you guys want to hear about and so far like we said this poll has only been up for about two hours and it seems as though you guys want to hear about the rapture now look what I said here what is true and what is false I wanted to make sure I put that in there you know because anybody can talk to you about the rapture and you know in today and in, in the age that we live in this Piscean age you know people prefer uh, um, lies over truth to be honest you know that's why we like stuff like soap operas that's why we like sitcoms and different stuff like that we don't really like documentaries you know we'd rather you know read books about the Bible instead of reading the Bible and you know that's just the age that we live in that's what it means to be in the Piscean age um, now, if you uh, you know, wanted to know, you know, um, about the Aquarian age, you'd probably pick something, you know, along the lines of the New Covenant and this transition up here. But, you know, you, you did pick the, you are picking the Rapture, at least the uh, few people that have voted so far, 104 votes so far, and they're all picking the Rapture. Um, and so we'll go ahead and we'll go on to talk about the Rapture more and more on our channel. Um, but notice this is going to be the truth about the rapture. Uh, we'll give you some, you know, uh, pull out some scriptural stuff that on when it will occur and such things. We, we are able to uh, break down, you know, some of the prophecies given by Daniel um, to help us to understand when this day will come. And you can see some of the classes that we, we have done already and we'll do more and more. But over here, we're going to focus on what is the truth about the rapture. Now, um, before I jump into this, now the, the topic of today in this class, what it's going to be is why do people believe that Pentecost and the rapture is the same thing? And I'm going to show you some facts about it now, um, some interesting points about, you know, why it is that people believe that uh, Pentecost and rapture is the same thing. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and interject some of what I think feel and believe on the subject I don't normally do that I usually stay um, um, very close to what the scripture says and without giving my own opinion on you know stuff like that I, I don't see my opinion being that valuable and but I am gonna give it in this class you know now going into this assuming this is early polling like I said it's only two hours in and you know a lot of you guys um, are picking the rapture truth about the rapture what's true and what's false about the rapture and before I go any further I want to remind you guys of the parable of the laborer the parable of the laborers now that parable you know isn't really um, let me jump over there and look at it right quick 
the parable of the laborers or the parable of the workers, the field workers. Um, you can see that over there in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 16. You can pull out your Bible and you can look at those. But it's talking about how you had um, the field owner, the land owner that went out into the um, um, area where the day workers were and invited some of them to come over and do work um, at three points in the day early in the morning in the afternoon and late in the day uh, he invited these three groups of people back over to do work at his place and at the end of the day when he was ready to pay those individuals he gave the ones who had showed up late in the day and had only been there working for an hour he gave them a penny and then those individuals who had been working there all day long was happy about about that they were excited about this this money because they was like hey if they got this amount of money then we're going to get more but then when it came time for them to receive their payment they only got the, the penny too and they were they were quite depressed they was like why why are you giving us a penny and you know uh um and and we've been here all day and you gave them a penny and they've only been here for an hour now this is important when it comes to the rapture story and understanding the truth about the rapture um because you know that's where we're at now you have individuals who have been laboring uh for many many years um uh, following and doing and being obedient to the father and doing what the father told us to do um, there's people out here who are making sacrifices as far as you know um, their life is concerned They're, they aren't able to enjoy the things that you know other people are they're not able to do some of the things that other people are because they're trying to be obedient to what the father told them to do and so you know they, they you know there's even people who are suffering poverty you know because it seems as though poverty is a part of the father's plan and they've been doing this for a long time some of them people who, who some of them people listening right now they know what I'm talking about um, they've been walking the walk for a long time keeping up and doing you know what the father says and you know if you stick around our channel long enough you're going to start to understand what it means to obey the father and do what it says and then some of you guys are going to take on this idea and you're going to want to embrace this idea of being obedient to the father well the, the purpose of the parable of the laborers is to let you know it doesn't matter if you've really been walking this walk for 20 some years or if you've been walking it only for five or six years or if you just found out yesterday that you know if, if you just came in to start working these fields as of yesterday we're still going to receive the same payment it's still going to be the, the we're still going to get the same thing so you know don't don't be thinking you know because you're coming into the understanding of the truth this late in the game that you're going to somehow miss out on the promises of the scripture. That's just not true. That's just not true at all. Um, we were told, we, we were explained in this parable that... Um, um, it doesn't really matter at what point at what part of the day that you have started to um, um, pick up your cross and follow the, 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 the father. It doesn't matter at what point you started to do that. We're, we're still going to end up uh, with the same pay. So I want you to meditate on that. Think about that. Go in and read this this parable and, you know, pray on the true understanding of what this parable means going forward, because, you know, this is Hermes Academy. I don't really like pulling punches on here. You know, I'm not really the, the, um, the, 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 I don't have a great bedside manner. Let me just put it like that. If you're sick, you're sick. And I'm probably going to tell you that you're sick. But just remember that I am here to help. I am here to tell you the truth. But let's get back to the topic of today. And the topic of today is why do people believe that Pentecost is going to occur, that rapture, is going to occur on Pentecost. We know that the rapture is coming. We know that it's going to be here one day. It is a biblical fact. There is a lot of debate on, you know, pre-tribulation rapture and mid-tribulation rapture and, you know, post-tribulation rapture. And we'll end up going into some of that, too. But the, the thing is, um, why do people think that it's okay, going to occur on Pentecost? And 
now just to pull out a group here not not saying you know which one I'm I believe in or anything like that but let's just pull out a group here because these are the most interested ones at the moment and that is the pre-tribulation rapture individuals these are people who believe that the rapture is supposed to occur before the tribulation ever gets here these are their they call them pre-tribbers and um and i only picked them out like i said because these individuals are the most active right now they they're the ones who are on watch the hardest right now because we're in a pre-tribulation obviously and and so they're they're watching and what i believe i'm gonna go ahead and tell you what i believe and i'm gonna show you i'm gonna show you um a, a way that i'm gonna prove this but what i believe is that um when certain biblical occurrences came and uh, people started looking at those events as if they were going to be the date of the rapture. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. In 2017, at the Revelations 12, sign in the sky, everybody, I mean, lotty dotty, everybody, my, maybe even myself included, thought that the uh, rapture was going to occur on... Um, September the 22nd or September the 23rd 2017 and then when that date came and left and I'm gonna show you some facts here you know this is not all opinion this is you know I'm gonna show you some some facts here to, to prove what I'm saying but and but it's not really necessarily scriptural facts so I'm having having to you know um, uh, make that make that note but when September of 2017 came and left people started wondering okay well when is the rapture when is it when is it when is it okay then um, the next feast day was of course Passover that was the memorial board blowing of trumpets you had atonement day that came after that you had tabernacles that came after that and then you even had the eighth day of tabernacles and no rapture had occurred no rapture had occurred and so by the time we got to the eighth day of tabernacles is when people started to give up on the idea that the rapture would occur in 2017 and then of course there was a few people that knew about um what's that other uh holiday that comes in in uh that holy day the holiday that comes in december um what is it called stacy Hanukkah and then when Hanukkah came and Hanukkah left individuals start thinking okay the the um rapture must be going to occur on uh, Passover and must be going to occur on you know Feast of Unleavened Bread and then when those dates came and went people said you know what those dates have already been fulfilled it must be Pentecost and then people locked in on Pentecost that Pentecost would be the date of the rapture and because Pentecost is the holy day the holy season the, the 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 mandatory feast day that no bit that nobody can really name down the exact hour in which it starts it is the only one um i can name off the other uh, uh feast days the other five feast days there you know the exact hour in which they all start atonement day memorial blowing the trumpets uh uh tabernacles um Passover, unleavened bread, you know the exact day and the exact hour in which it starts. Pentecost, however, the feast, the feast of first fruits, however, nobody knows the hour. And so that became uh, where people started saying that must be the day because nobody knows the hour. Nobody know. And, and, and even when you look at Leviticus 23 in the King James Version is, and the other versions, there seemed to be some conflict there. And there's a lot of people who say, well, you don't even know the real day. And, and then they entered in with the whole barley harvesting. And even when Pentecost. Pentecost of 2018 came and left. People start saying, well, it's because the barley harvest hasn't gotten here yet. And, you know, we're still waiting for the barley harvest. And all of that started to where Pentecost got pushed off uh, month after month after month. And I'm going to try to show you that here. OK, I'm going to show you how it started in 2018. People started all of a sudden 
um, wrapping their minds around the idea that Pentecost would be the rapture. Rapture would occur on Pentecost. Now, let me go ahead and show you this, how I'm going to prove this. Now, I'm looking here in Google and I'm looking for the phrase Pentecost rapture. And you see right here, I'm looking at anything that occurred, any anything that was posted up before December the 31st of 2016. Meaning, was anybody saying anything about the Pentecost rapture on before 2016? When you go into Google and you look, what was posted on Google about Pentecost rapture before December the 31st, 2016, you don't see anything. I've been down here looking. Of course, Google is almost always going to, you know, throw up a hit. It's always going to throw up a hit. To, to tell you something it's never really going to give you blank unless you look for that place over there in uh, next to Jerusalem where they still have that temple over there and you know that mock temple over there you know in Jerusalem if you put up that city it'll come up blank but I can't remember the name of it right now but you see here nobody's saying anything about Pentecost rapture it's like Pentecost rapture didn't exist back there before 2016 nobody was saying anything about it this is Google and I'm showing you um, highlight after highlight going down through here where nobody said anything we didn't we didn't look that I don't use Google tell me how many hits it was but we done made it down here to the end of the first page and nobody said anything about Pentecost 2000 uh, Pentecost rapture now that I am preparing this video and editing it I see where I missed one website on that Google that uh, spoke of Pentecost rapture and you probably guys may have noticed it um, but it's a book called the Pentecostal rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ and it's by J.W. Langford um, so this would have been the only time that it was mentioned and this book looks like it was written I don't see it here but it looks like it was actually written in 2014 so uh, I believe it is safe to say that before 2016 J W Langford was the only person who had the idea that the rapture would occur on Pentecost and let's see let me read some of this of what he's saying He says, a few Bible teachers have suspected that the Feast of Pentecost better fits an application to the rapture of the church. However, because of certain unanswered questions, they have hesitated to make that application. In other words, some people may have thought it, but nobody actually said it. This guy, um, J.W. Langford, was the first person to actually say it out loud in a book in 2014. So he could have very well been the person who started this. But we'll look further into Jack Langford in a future class. Let's go on with this one. That was before 2016. Now let's see what we, if we put in a custom date of, we'll say, uh, we're going to go to 2017. No, we're going to start in 2017 because that ended in December of 2016 so we're going to start at 2017 and then we're going to go to 2018 now all of a sudden you see people posting up seven reasons for a Pentecostal rapture you, you start to see now when you put in those dates you got uh, website after website of people talking about rapture on the Pentecost before 2017, there were none. After 2017, we're getting hit after hit. It's like it's like everybody wants to talk about the rapture in 2017. Not every one of these. If you look in here, just looking down, not every one of these is talking about Pentecost rapture. Here's one. It's just naming Pentecost in 2018. There's not mentioned in the rapture. I, I, I got to go back up there and look 
because most of these down here they don't say anything about Pentecost rapture matter of fact the only one that okay there's one right there cross cultures uh, possible Pentecost rapture but and it was on May the 14th 2018 so I'm gonna go back up there and look this was saying Pentecost rapture 2021 but you see there's only a few but now let's go modern time after 2018 let's take out this caveat here well past years should take us back to 2019 there's one that says Pente the top one says Pentecost rapture how watch period Pentecost 2020 chasing Pentecost 2020 red moon rapture it's like every one of them is saying Pentecost rapture now see what I mean now let's jump over here to and, and let me see if there's any more we did the other one keep going Pentecost rapture uh understanding the mystery of the Pentecost yep there he sees right there Pentecost rapture used together so according to Google nobody was interested or nobody was posting anything about a Pentecost rapture before 2017 now almost all of the websites are talking about Pentecost rapture now let's look at YouTube all right, let's go in and let's look at Pentecost Rapture 2016. Now, looking down here, I got my images turned off, so it don't look quite the same that if you go on and put it in yours. But if you, if you put it in yours, you're going to get an image over here that's going to show up. You know, I don't like doing that on my channel. But if you come over here, you're going to get the same titles, though. And you see there's one right there that says Pentecost Rapture, June the 11th, 2016. Let's come back to that one. Because when we go down here and look at the rest of these titles, there's no title that says Pentecost Rapture. You don't see any of them that have the word Pentecost and Rapture in the same verse. Nobody was thinking about a Pentecost. That's the end right there. I think it is just yeah, kind of going and more related. Nobody was thinking about Pentecost rapture in 2016. They say I was a I was a song about the rapture, but it doesn't mention Pentecost. A lot of people mention Pentecost, but they don't mention rapture except one site, one video. Pentecost rapture 2016. You find that you find that in one video. And look, it has nine views and one of them is me. I've looked at this video and he doesn't even say the word rapture is going to occur on Pentecost. In the video, he doesn't say it directly. Nine views. But now let's come in and do the same thing for 17. Let's see. One says Pentecost 2017. Next one says, what is Pentecost? Next one says uh, Pentecost High Rapture Watch. There's one. This one down here is just talking about the Feast of Harvest. None of these are saying Pentecost Rapture. There's one down there. 2017-2018. It has 400, 450 people was interested in somebody talking about Pentecost Rapture. And that was, it says, a year ago. So that would have been, you know, about 2019 or so that 400 people was interested in that. But look, nobody's nobody's really saying anything. Here's somebody saying that there's not a Pentecost rapture. But then 436 people. All right, but now let's come up here and let's look at 18. Scrolling down through here again, nobody's saying Pentecost rapture. There's one right there, timing of true rapture, Pentecost. Now you got a thousand people looked at that one. 2018, a thousand people thought it could be a Pentecost on the rapture in 2018. Here's another one right here. 
2018, 8,000 people looked at a video called Pentecost Rapture, 2000, June 2018. See how we're increasing? We went from 9 up to, you know, 400. Now we're up to 8,000. Now let's look at 19. How many people started thinking there could be a rapture on the Pentecost in 2019? Okay, here okay, here's one right here. It says Pentecost equals rapture. This the person that might actually be no, that's a playlist. They might actually be responsible for telling for making the direct link. Okay, here's the first one that says Pentecost Rapture 2019, 9,000 views. So you went from nine to nine thousand now. And here we are at the end of the Pentecost season in 2020. Let's look at 2020, because there's not many in, two, in, in 2019. Let's look at how many people think there could be a Pentecost rapture in 2020. Let's see, Pentecost 2020, he doesn't say rapture, rapture ready, he doesn't say Pentecost. Here's one that says Pentecost and the Rapture 2020, 16,000 views. See how everybody's really starting to get interested in the Rapture now? More and more. 967,000 views. Nine thousand views. Twelve thousand views. Pentecost Rapture. See that? So the conclusion is, is that we have artificially made a link, artificially and recently made a link between Pentecost and the rapture. We have we have convinced ourselves and allowed others to, you know, you know, maybe YouTube videos had a lot to do with that. But we have convinced ourselves that Pentecost or the rapture would occur on Pentecost. This didn't used to be the case. Nobody thought about this until here recently within the last four years. And like we said, in 2016, it was like one person thought about it on YouTube and only nine people came to see what he was even talking about. One person, one video, nine people viewed it. And now we have hundreds of thousands of people watching videos associated with Pentecost and the rapture. All right. So my point is, and I could probably show you this scripturally, is that Pentecost doesn't equal rapture. Rapture doesn't equal Pentecost. There's nothing that tells us that the rapture will fall on Pentecost. We're speculating. You know, we're, we're going go back and look at some of these guys arguments that they're making. You know, they're not pointing to scripture saying the Bible says Pentecost is going to be on rapture or they're not saying that the, the rapture, the Bible says that the rapture will fall on Pentecost. There's nothing. There's nothing making this connection. We're speculating there. So we have to make this disconnect. Now, again, I'm not saying that the rapture is not going to occur. It is going to occur. I am 100 percent sure that it's going to occur. But is it going to occur on Pentecost? I don't I don't see why it would. Pentecost has been fulfilled, hasn't it? It's, it's, it's that feast has already been fulfilled as far as we're concerned that it that feast is over and done with. We've already we've already done Pentecost. Pentecost has been fulfilled. Even the memorial of blowing of trumpets has already been fulfilled. I believe in 2017 when the Revelations 12 sign on the sky fell on the memorial of blowing of trumpets in September of 2017. The next feast day to occur that hasn't been fulfilled yet is atonement day is atonement day and if you know anything about what the bible says about the rapture and you know you start to look at what it says about atonement day atonement day is a more likely you know uh day that it could occur now i'm not saying that it's going to happen on atonement day 
I'm just saying, you know, Atonement Day is the day of the Holocaust. You know, Atonement Day is a is a big day. Like I said, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the truth. But um, some of you guys might not be ready for the truth. But you know, I understand that you know we are held accountable for any mistruths that we tell. I do understand that. That if I tell you something that's not true, whether I do it on purpose or whether I do it on accident, I understand that in the hour of the conscience, I'm going to have to pay for those errors. So, I am even the mistakes, I'm going to have to they're going to weigh on my conscience and going to, you know, torture me for the mistruths that I've spread to anybody. And so I'm really careful not to do that and, you know, I bite my tongue sometimes, but I ain't going to let a lie come out of my mouth you know and so um but over here i'm looking at revelations chapter eight and um now we've done classes on our channel on these seven seals we've broke it we've we've broke it down a little bit we still got you know a class to go where we're actually going to go into detail on it I've, I've tried to do it once but i didn't like how it turned out so i'm gonna end up recording it again so hit the subscribe button so you can see that class when it comes out but over here in revelations chapter eight you're you're talking about you're basically talking about atonement day over here and how you know you have this angel here with this golden censer and these incense that are put up on the golden altar. This reminds me of Aaron and the responsibilities of the high priest and such right here. See how it says fire up on the altar? This is to me pointing to the activities that, have, that go on around atonement day. And then it is after this that the trumpets start to blow. And we know that the third temple, who some people refer to as the rapture, the opening of the third temple, we know that that occurs before the trumpets ever blow. We've done classes on that. And so, like I said, this up here kind of relates to what goes on on Atonement Day. And all of this occurs before the trumpets ever blow that we see later on in Revelation chapter 7. I mean, Revelations chapter eight. My point is, is that we have to make this disconnect. I know, you know, there's some people still trying to stretch it out and they're going to stretch it out. Some people have been stretching out a Pentecost. They've been stretching out Pentecost 2017 up until now. You look at some people's channel and Pentecost 2017 hasn't happened yet. They still waiting on this and still waiting on that. Pentecost 2017 ain't occurred yet. For this reason or for that reason, they keep pushing it out and they're going to keep pushing it out because they want to believe that Pentecost and the rapture go hand in hand. But I think I've proven here that it doesn't. I believe I've proven that it's just a recent idea. That's a recent idea. It's a recent idea that Pentecost and um, uh, rapture go hand in hand. You know, I could put in Atonement Day and rapture, you know, to see, you know, have more people been thinking Atonement Day. But that ain't the purpose of this video. All right, now I'm looking back over here at this poll. Looks like we're up to 289 votes so far. That's about uh, 12 or 15 percent of the people that are subscribed to our channel. So the rest of you guys, jump in and um, check out that poll and vote. You know, we do want to know what it is that you guys want to hear about, want to learn about. You know, we don't mind teaching about anything. You know, we, you know, as long as it's scriptural. We could teach you about hunting and playing chess and Texas Hold'em too, but you know I don't think anybody will be interested on our channel. But jump over there on the poll and voice your opinion. Looks like those that want to hear about the truth about the rapture are leading the way at 59%. And we'll continue to put out classes on the rapture. Um, now we'll also go in and show you how the rapture is actually related to the new covenant. I'll put that in the poll here basically to see if people understood the relationship between the rapture and the new covenant and I believe that if more people understood that relationship those numbers would be closer together you have about 59 percent voting for the rapture and only six percent want to hear about the new covenant but since in a lot of ways they go hand in hand, we will be addressing the new covenant and what it is. And we'll even talk about the old covenant, the covenant that we're in now, which you can read about over there in Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23. Those four chapters address the covenant that we're in as we await the new covenant. 
when the laws will be written on our hearts. We do get a lot of comments about that, you know, people asking questions, well, aren't we under the new covenant? And my answer is always the same. In the new covenant, the laws will be written on our hearts. And if we are under the new covenant with the laws written on our hearts, why are we still debating whether we should be keeping the laws? Why is there even any discussion on whether we should be doing the laws in the first place if those laws are still written on our heart? And why are we continuing to break those laws if they are written on our heart? I say that to make the point that the new covenant is something we are still awaiting. And like I said, I believe it goes hand in hand with this rapture. You can think of it like this. There will be a lot of people that will be going up and for a lot of people the covenant will be coming down. But anyway, we'll address that in a future class. While I have your attention, I do want to bring your attention to the Third Testament of the Bible. There's only 6% of the people that want to hear about the Third Testament of the Bible. That's quite surprising um, as it is such a controversial document. There is a lot of people who want to um, prevent you from ever knowing that the Third Testament of the Bible exists. There's a lot of people that are standing in the way of that right now. Even though it is portrayed in movies like the Book of Eli, if you go back and look at the Book of Eli, you'll see that it is actually talking about the Third Testament of the Bible. You know that because of how the Bible doesn't exist. You know, the Bible is the most popular book on the planet now. How is it that one day all of them could be gone? There's nothing in the Old Testament or the New Testament that foretells us that the New Testament and the Old Testament will be destroyed. Seems like that would have been important enough to write in the Bible somewhere that they're actually going to burn all of the Bibles. No, it is actually talking about the Third Testament of the Bible. And that individual that is pursuing the scripture is actually pursuing the third testament of the Bible. He's saying that he knew of this book. And if he just had that book, everybody would get excited about that book and he would be able to have a lot of power. And it is because of the teachings of that book teaches about spiritualization, teaches how we can control the weather, teaches how we can um um, heal the sick and you know basically teaches us um, um, you know a lot of information the third testament what it boils down to is the age that we are about to go into now um, when we entered into the age of, of Aries I believe it was when we entered into the age of Aries let me jump over I believe I got that here somewhere and I just briefly want to talk about these, hoping that you guys will jump over and give you a votes on this poll over here. But as we entered the age of Aries, which was about 2000 years before Christ, that's when we got the Old Testament of the Bible. Humanity was going into a new age, a new era. And with that new age and that new era, we needed a whole new set of instructions to go by. And that's about the time that Moses got what we call the Old Testament of the Bible. It gave us uh, rules on how to live in that era of time. And then you see right here that 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 time, the age of Aries ended on or about the time that the Messiah came down to the earth the word made flesh and about it says that the in about 1 AD is when we entered what's called the Piscean age and because once again humanity was changing from one age to another age from one era to another era humanity needed a whole new set of instructions to go by and that's why we got the New Testament and that's the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament the New Testament was never supposed to take away from the Old Testament what it was supposed to do was give us an additional set of instructions that we needed in order to live in the Piscean age and of course that book should have included the Shepherd of Hermes but and it was at one point 
the Shepherd of Hermes was considered canonical up until about 500 uh, AD when basically the Catholic leaders at the time decided that they didn't want to keep the Shepherd of Hermes in our Bibles and they took the Shepherd of Hermes out of our Bibles. That is part of the instructions that we should have gotten in the Piscean Age teaching us how to um, reject things like hate and selfishness and you know a bunch of other traits that we call the uh, passions you know how the Bible says we fight against principalities and powers well it was the Shepherd of Hermas that taught us about those powers um, there's 12 good powers and 12 bad powers we call the bad powers passions or whatever but it was the Shepherd of Hermas that um, was supposed to be a part of the documents that we got Beginning in the Piscean Age, beginning in the Piscean Age, we got the New Testament of the Bible. And the thing is, now that we're entering the age of Aquarius, the Aquarian Age, once again, humanity has gotten a new set of instructions on what it is, how it is that we're supposed to live in this new era going forward. You see, it goes all the way up to uh, A.D. Uh, 4000 which will include the entire millennial age that's the purpose of the third testament of the bible is to teach us how to live in the aquarian age but just like the new testament didn't take anything away from the old testament the third testament of the bible doesn't take anything away from the old testament or the new testament and in fact helps us to understand a lot of what was being talked about over in those other documents and i'm instructed to tell you guys that in order to understand the Old Testament and you know what's talked about in the New Testament you have to have the third testament of the Bible you have to have it but like we said there's a lot of people that don't want you to read it there's gonna be people jumping down there in the comment section that's gonna to try to uh, convince me and everybody else that we shouldn't be listening to the Old Testament I say read it for yourself I give you a description I give you a link to it in the description there's both uh, there's a PDF that you could download if you like reading but there's also audio books on YouTube that you could actually listen to the Third Testament of the Bible like I said it is very controversial as you know many of our uh, religious leaders of the day are trying to prevent us from uh, understanding that this book exists um, they don't want us to know about it but it is it is the same people that don't want us to uh, read Moses either they don't want us to read about Moses they don't want us to read you know a lot of the principles that the Messiah taught they don't want us to read that they just want us to you know come and let them tell us what we're supposed to feel think and believe and and so they don't want us to know about the third testament of the bible but go in read it for yourself i just advise you to read it for yourself the father says that his his sheep will recognize his voice so if you are of his voice you should be able to pick up that document in any document you should be able to pick up any document and be able to read it and know whether it is true or not it should jive with your spirit if it is true or not you should be able to read it and then that spirit man inside of you will know whether it's food or whether it's poison or not so I would advise you to go in and read it for yourself um, like I said and again look for the uh, link to it all over the place I'm trying to I'm trying to get that information out to you guys that link over in the description is going to take you over here to a website called uh, jesuscomes.com is uh, a final it's a PDF over there uh, on the third testament of the Bible and then if you have a, or if you're looking at it on your computer you can hit this download button and you can actually download it uh, to your computer I believe that if I was still working in corporate America with them big old copy machines that was big as my mama's car or whatever, I would accidentally hit that print button right there and go ahead and print this 592 page document off for myself. I would probably even print off a few copies. I'd, I'd replace the paper. I believe you can get two or three hundred sheets of paper for about two dollars a pack there at Walmart. I'd give them that their paper back, but you know, I believe I'd hit that print button right there and I'd spin one off right quick because is it it is extremely hard to to uh, get a copy of that Bible. Uh jumping back over here, um there's looks like a large majority of you guys want to hear about the hundred and forty four thousand. 
These are the people who've been around our channel the longest, the people that want to hear about the 144,000. We've done several classes on our channel on the 144,000. If you did a search for if you did a search for 144,000 and the fight, you'd see several classes that we've done on our channel related to the 144,000. We've been teaching about this for a long time. Guys, even years we've been giving classes on the 144,000. Um, we've even created a playlist here recently. If you wanted to go in and you could jump and look at a playlist on the 144,000. And we'll continue to teach about that. You know, um, we'll continue to teach about the 144,000, who they are, you know, uh, their purpose here. Uh, this is a very important group. You know, they are here to save humanity. Um, and so um, there's a lot of people, a lot of subscribers to our channel that uh, um, are aspiring to be members of the 144,000. Um, and so you, you guys will be seeing classes on that and we'll probably mix some of this stuff up. And then we're also going to talk about the tribulation a little. There's about 9% of you guys out there so far that want to hear about the tribulation. Um, and survival of the tribulation, you know, it ain't so much as what it is and what it's going to entail, but, you know, the scripture tells us that we can inherit the earth, uh, for those of us who plan on sticking around, um, we do have the opportunity to inherit the earth and but you know it's not going to be easy there's certain things that we have to do in order to inherit the earth a lot of that we'll find over in the uh current covenant again that's exodus chapter 20 uh through 23 we can find out the covenant and we can read in chapter 23 about the covenant angel who is going to help us to get through the tribulation there and so we'll be talking about that we'll be talking about jacob and who jacob is why it is that jacob has to go through this trouble and all of this we're starting to see a lot of this uh being played out on our television if you understand who jacob is you know and for those who do understand, you know, who Jacob is, just just note that he said Jacob's trouble and not Israel's trouble. Jacob's trouble and not Israel's trouble. You know, that's something to think about. But we'll cover that in a future class, bringing everybody up to speed on that. All right. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Go ahead in there and vote if you will. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already so you can uh, cast your vote. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. May our Father bless you and keep you. May our Father make his face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. May our Heavenly Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.